So for this part of the tutorial, we're gonna need a little geometry to put in for my face. Uh, and I wanna show you how to take generic geometry and conform it to photography. So I just fired up this uh, open source application called Make Human, which you can Google and download for free. We're gonna make some changes to some of these parameters. I only really care about the face, so let's zoom in on that and try and make this face look as similar to my face as, as we can, but it's never gonna be really accurate. It doesn't need to be. I'm a pretty skinny guy. Let's turn the musculature down. It doesn't look like that really affects the face much. It does affect the neck a little bit. Let's drop the weight. Uh, height doesn't matter. Portions won't matter, and I am obviously Caucasian. So uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I think maybe my age is too high. Let's drop that a little bit. That's fine. Um, and then if I hit Command E on the Mac and export wave front and pick where I want it. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Untitled is fine. Okay, great. Okay, here we are in Blender. I'm going to select everything by hitting the A key a couple times. X for delete and empty the scene. Uh, I'm also going to move the cursor back to the center. File, import. Wavefront OBJ on my desktop. That untitled OBJ file. So here it is. Let's go into edit mode. Oops, we have a couple things selected actually. I just realized. Uh, Make Human separates the eyes and the, and the body. And we don't need the eyes, so I'm gonna select those. You can kind of see that they're selected right now. A little orange outline on there. X delete. Eyes are gone. Now I'm gonna select this object and go into edit mode. Something I wanna do before I get started. I'm gonna rename this, this whole object. Let's go back into object mode. And we're gonna call it head. And we're gonna call that head as well. So let's go back into edit mode. I'm gonna select edges and if I hold down the alt key I can do edge loops and then I can go to the numpad and hit control plus X faces and remove all that then I will uh, select any one of these faces and control plus again the reason I am doing this is to select the entire lower body frame that up zoom out so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to select the whole body. Delete. Faces. Awesome. Let's go back into edge mode. It's a little easier to see. One other thing that we should uh, note is that the eyes have like these interior eye sockets, as does the mouth. And we don't need that. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to once again select those faces and I will select those faces great and then one more gotta, gotta do the mouth now I have a hard time navigating the viewport do that and we'll go plus and delete those faces. So the beauty of that is now we can select any element from any element from here and then just hit control plus and we can just select all of that stuff without worrying about selecting connected vertices on the outside of the face because we deleted them those connecting faces. And there's our generic head. Let's go back out in object mode. And that'll work just fine. File, export, 
Wavefront OBJ. I'm gonna save this to my Mammer Projects Tutorials, Soft Tracking, Project Files OBJ. I already saved a version of this earlier. I'm gonna overwrite it with this new generic head. So let's go into Synthize now and add this geometry to our track. The first thing I wanna do before I import that mesh is deal with this high error. So I'm gonna to go to the uh, track and I'm gonna do clean up trackers. I'm just gonna click on all these so you can see what's going on. You can see a lot of high error trackers being selected and problem trackers. So I'm just gonna hit fix. Go back to the solver room, change this to refine and hit go. Boom, done, great. Hey, take a look at that. The error dropped from 1.8 pixels to 1.038 pixels. That's a huge improvement. There's something else I wanna do. I wanna change my world size, which is here. I'm gonna change that to 1,000. And I'm gonna hit go again. Awesome. The reason I did that is to move all of these distant far trackers in the background really far back. So now our object is really just isolated in space here. That's kind of funny. You can see my roto <laughs> spline right here represented in the solve. That's pretty funny. Uh, okay, so now with object one selected, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Let's go to the 3D view. We have quad, change this to quad perspective and hit lock. Something else we're gonna wanna do is go to edit scene settings. And I'm going to dial down the tracker size like that. So the trackers are much smaller. And I'm gonna dial down the object size as well just to uh, make it a little more manageable. I've got object one selected here. I'm gonna hit hole and grab this and move it down to like where my neck would be, somewhere in the center of my head. Again, just to get it out of the way. So I'll turn hole off and now if we hit play, we can see that it's not gonna be terribly in the way. Oh, it turned edit pivots off. This was left on earlier, sorry about that. So you can see the object, yeah, let's select it again. You can see the object moving. There's something uh, I also wanna show you. Go to toolbars and uh, turn on view. And I'm gonna turn on local coordinate handles. It's gonna make it a little easier to see the object rotating around. So that's, that's pretty good. Even, and if we wanted, I can turn hole back on and rotate this around so that the axes of my head are more aligned to really the direction that my face is pointing. So now my face, when it's facing forward, the z-axis is in alignment with my nose. You don't really need to do that, but... New feature in Synthize, you can now hide these handles, so let's get rid of those. And I'm also going to get rid of the view. Now, with object one selected, I'm going to say, you know, let's get my face straightforward. I'm going to file, import, mesh. And it's going to be under soft tracking, project files, OBJ, generic head. And so what you're going to see is if you look, the head is really out of position. And it's also parented to the head object. We want that eventually to happen, but, but right now we could do it this way. We could say, let's move the object manually into place and then we'll rotate it, uh, unhide the handles. We can hit control and, and but, but then we see like, oh, look, the head's all, you know, its pivot point is way down here. So there are a lot of problems. I'm gonna delete the head. And I'm gonna re-import it. Get my head more forward in the photography. I'm gonna to go to the camera 01 and now file import mesh. 
and import the generic head object. So now by doing it that way, the head is in world space. It's exactly where it was when we did some fixing on the object in Blender. But uh, the other problem is that the head object right now, I can tell you the pivot point is way down here because if we try and rotate the head, we can rotate it, but now it's rotating around the feet at the base of the object. So the other cool thing we can do with the new uh, synthesizer is we can say edit pivots and we can see these pivot points, the X and Y axes are down here. And if I move this object, oh, I'm gonna turn off edit pivots. If I move this object down like this and turn edit pivots back on, we can see that the Z axis is right here. So with edit pivots on, you can just grab the Z axis and drag the pivot point up and get it centered up in the head. And turn off edit pivots. Now, if I hold down the control key, I can, oops, see daisies. Let's uh, relock that. If I click on this carefully and I control click on that axis, I can now rotate the head. So that's pretty cool. So going back to a frame where the head is, my head in the photography is generally facing straight forward. I can now in the GOH toolbar, let's collapse these trackers and drag the head onto the object. So now it's parented. Hey, voila, look at that. And now we can just grab the head and move it around. Let's go to edit pivots again and center that up a little better. Okay, and then control click here and rotate that. Uh, we're also going to want to scale that object, so let's just give it an overall scale here. And move it over, and move it up. But you're going to get it to a point where you're going to be like, that's good enough. Because it's never going to line up perfectly. But that's not terrible. Let's go back here and change the, the color of this object so it's easier to see. I'm going to make it a... Let's make it black. Let's just start with black and see if that's good. Yeah, that's all right. I don't hate it. And the track looks pretty good, but things don't line up. If we zoom in here, pan this down, we can see the nose is totally wrong. My mouth is totally wrong. So let's let's do a little more adjusting. It's not... oh, I left that part of the job too soon. There we go. It's a little better. A little better. The eyes are not terrible, but the and the mouth isn't super awful, but the nose is really wrong. Okay, let's get into the next stage, which is the smudge tool. <laughs> 